This video is about order of operations and goes along with sixth grade, chapter six, section two, lesson one. Previously, when you've learned about order of operations, you've probably learned something like PEMDAS or GEMS, and I've recently heard about GEMDAS, which I find a little bit confusing. Um, we're not going to be using any of those. We think there's a way that it's simplified a little bit, and I'll show you that right now. When we're talking about this, we need to know what the vocabulary is, and here we're looking at the word term. A term is a single number, variable, or product of numbers and variables. That means nine, the number nine, is a term. That means that a can be a term. That means that nine times three can be a term because we're looking at product. Okay, it can get a little bit confusing if we have something like nine divided by three, but remember that's the same thing as nine times one third. So when we're dividing, that's this whole section here, nine divided by three, is still considered a term. So if we're looking at an order of operations problem, such as this one, how do we solve it using this idea? Well, what we need to do is we need to circle our terms. In this case, three and four times five, we have two terms, we have three, and we have four times five, okay? Each term is separated by an addition or subtraction symbol. And then what we do is we solve what's inside of it. So three, there's nothing that needs to be done to it. So we have three, we carry down our symbol, we're adding, and four times five is 20. And then we can go from there and say three plus 20 gives us 23. And that's all that we're looking to do. So once again, circle your terms, which are separated by addition and subtraction symbols, solve what you circled, and then work your way down. And here we have our upside triangle. Once again, try another problem. Here we have three squared minus five divided by eight plus three times the sum of five and two. Take a moment and circle your terms and then solve it. As I circle my terms, I have three squared, I have five divided by eight, and I have three times the sum of five and two. And then I'm gonna work my way down. Three squared is, remember it's the same as three times three, not three times two. That's gonna give me nine. Carry down your subtraction. Five divided by eight. I'm just gonna write five eighths, even though I, I know it's the same thing. Carry down your addition symbol. And here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. We can do three times seven, uh, which we know to do based upon what we've done in the past, or we can do the distributive property uh, and break it down to say three times five plus three times two. I'm gonna write it as three times seven because I think that's going to be a little bit easier. Then I'm gonna circle my terms again because we're not done yet, okay? And then we're gonna move it down. Nine doesn't change, subtraction doesn't change, five-eighths doesn't change, um, our addition doesn't change, but three times seven does change to 21. At this point, it's up to you if you wanna continue circling the terms or if you wanna just solve it left to right, okay? Nine minus five-eighths gives me eight and three-eighths plus 21, and then I'm gonna keep moving down. I know that 21 plus eight is 29, and I still have my three-eighths, which gives me my solution. Okay. As we're solving this, you notice I'm just working left to right and solving each term that I've circled as I go. Try one more on your own. 6 plus 7 squared minus 2 divided by 4 plus 4 times the difference of 8 and 2. And here's how I would circle my terms. Okay, And then here's how I would solve it. Okay. You can see where I drew all the arrows, where you can see where each part's carried down. You don't have to draw the arrows if you, it's going to be a distraction to you, uh, but do circle each piece. That is important. Okay, And you can see where I do have my upside down triangle going, and you're able to work through it that way. And my end result is 78 and a half.